Welcome to Six Scary Middle-of-Nowhere Horror Stories, a compilation of tales that will transport you to the most isolated and eerie places imaginable. In these stories, the silence of the wilderness speaks volumes, and the vast, open spaces hide secrets waiting to be uncovered. From desolate roads cutting through forgotten landscapes, to abandoned structures that house unsettling pasts. Each narrative explores the fear and mystery that thrive where civilization ends and the unknown begins. Prepare to journey into the heart of darkness, where the only witnesses are the moon and stars, and every rustle in the underbrush could be something unspeakable lurking just out of sight. Brace yourself for a series of encounters that will leave you questioning what might be hiding in the desolate corners of the world. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends, and a warm welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. Today, I'm excited to share some creepy and allegedly true middle of nowhere and rural horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or via the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Stories like yours help keep this show going on a daily basis. Be sure to slap that like button as it helps us grow here in the swamp. If you're new, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as I upload new videos almost every single day featuring all things natural and supernatural. Now let's dive into these creepy and allegedly true middle of nowhere and rural horror stories that will freak you out tonight. Our first tale UFO Encounters in the Woods by Goddesses starts with a bit of irony. The sender is a real-life swamp dweller, living in a small hamlet smaller than a village, aptly named Swamp, situated in an actual swamp. Their house stands alone in the middle of the woods, flanked by a bubbling creek and two sloping hills. They humorously refer to themselves as the real-life Shrek but on to the story. This event occurred around 25 years ago when the sender was about 10 years old. Back then, the house was a holiday home, a refurbished water mill that had been in the family for over 200 years. It was summer, a time for vacations, and the house was bustling with family and friends. The children played, ran in the woods and swamp, exploring every nook and cranny. However, on the third day of their stay, an odd lethargy overtook everyone right after lunch. Despite plans to make the most of the day, adults and children alike felt an overwhelming need to nap. The sender noticed that their friend, who will remain unnamed, didn't seem affected by this sudden tiredness. Not wanting to leave them alone, they tried to resist the urge to sleep, but as they were about to succumb, something odd caught their attention, compelling them to investigate further. They forced themselves up and descended the stairs towards an unknown encounter. I stepped outside, immediately taken aback by the brightness of the day. The sun seemed unusually intense, even for midday. As I stood on the veranda, my friend approached, his expression one of annoyance. I couldn't understand his mood or what was happening, but an internal nudge compelled me to look skyward. Above, nestled among the clouds, was a cigar-shaped object, distinctively unnatural. It couldn't be a plane. It lacked wings and hovered motionlessly. In shock, I called out to my friend, urging him to look up and witness the strange craft. As we both stared, the object began to move, 
first slowly, then accelerating at an incredible speed before vanishing from sight. The excitement drove me back into the house to inform my mom, but the story of two kids seeing a UFO in broad daylight was met with skepticism. For years, I tried to rationalize it as a hallucination until a sudden revelation brought back the memory with chilling new details. I remembered seeing a bright light and my friend at the clearing by the creek, accompanied by two strange figures, one tall and the other significantly shorter. They conversed until the tall one noticed me watching. The figures looked displeased, then vanished in a flash of light, leaving only my friend to walk back towards me. This memory clarified why that particular patch of ground remained discolored for years, why my friend never returned to the house, and why everyone else seemed unnaturally asleep during the event. Years later, I learned of the valley's history as a refuge and its connection to various shrines and spiritual claims, including a visit from a self-proclaimed witch who labeled it a nexus of lines and a sanctuary from evil. While it's hard to fully believe such things, the experience remains a haunting and transformative memory. Switching gears, we move to a story titled Small Town Murder by OK Category. In May 2022, I worked at a gas station and truck stop in a small town situated between Houston and Dallas. The town was quiet and rural, with the nearest shopping center hours away and Dollar General serving as one of the only grocery options. Situated next to an interstate, the store was a frequent stop for many, especially over the weekends. This job on the night shift, from 3 o'clock to 11 p.m., offered a unique window into the life and sometimes darker undercurrents of this small, seemingly sleepy town. During that fateful May, our routine at the truck stop was interrupted by an emergency alert about an escaped armed convict, a surprising development given the proximity of only an all-female prison. Despite the alert, we were required to continue our shifts. The atmosphere at work was tense, with everyone on edge due to the Amber Alert. The night shift crew was a fantastic group, but that first night was different. With the flood of police and TDCJ officers coming in for food, the atmosphere was hectic. We learned bits and pieces about the convict, including his appearance and the crime he was convicted for. It was thought he might be heading towards San Antonio, an hour away from us. Our town, being rural and sprawling with farms, ranches, and wooded areas, offered many hiding spots. It was located right off the interstate, making the search even more challenging. After three weeks of search, the horrifying climax unfolded on June 2nd. The convict broke into a ranch house, cleaned himself up, and then encountered a family of five. He brutally murdered them, a grandfather and his four grandsons, and stole the family's truck and some guns. A relative's call to the police led to the discovery of the bodies. A national alert for the white truck was issued, and after a tense chase involving spike strips and a shootout, the convict was killed by police fire. The end of this three-week ordeal brought relief but also a deep sorrow for the five innocent lives lost, including children. In Texas, where the death penalty is a reality, it's believed this man would have met that fate had he been captured alive. This tragic event left a lasting impact on the town, a grim reminder of the fragility of life and the depths of human cruelty. After the ordeal was over, 
my mom told me that a photo of the convict's body was on the internet. And to this day, it still circulates on Twitter. Sometimes, I look at that photo, and I feel a sense of relief exhaling from me, knowing that this person can no longer harm anyone. Now, shifting to another story titled, Followed Down Dark Rural Roads by Natural Edged. This event ranks as one of the scariest moments of my life. I was living in a rural county town nestled in the mountains, so isolated that there was only one road in and out of the city, about 50 miles of pitch black cliffs, fields, and the occasional farm. At the start of this road, as you leave the big city, there's a vast, always busy gas station. One night, after seeing a midnight movie, my mom and I stopped at this gas station for drinks and gas before heading home. As we left, I noticed a dingy green Jeep pull out behind us, but thought little of it at first. After about five, ten minutes, the Jeep suddenly sped past us, only to pull over ahead with hazards on and a man gesturing for us to stop. My mom wisely drove around him without slowing down both of us feeling increasingly uneasy. This odd behavior continued, with the Jeep overtaking us and gesturing for us to stop several times. But things escalated terrifyingly after the third time when he began to tailgate us at high speed. His aggressive driving, horn blaring, and gesturing continued for a distressing half hour. My mom was hyperventilating, trying to outpace him while I clutched a pocket knife, screaming at her not to stop. The fear was overwhelming, with no cell service available until town, leaving us feeling utterly isolated. Just when it seemed unbearable, the man slammed on his brakes, turned around, and headed back the way he came. We arrived home in a shaken silence, reflecting on the incident the next day. We speculated that he saw us, two women alone in a car, as potential targets. It's a chilling reminder of the dangers that can lurk on even the most familiar and seemingly safe paths. A story I've shared with others who agree on the sinister implications of that night's events. Many have suggested that perhaps the individual in the Jeep was trying to return something we might have dropped at the gas station, trying to be a good Samaritan. But realistically, it's hard to believe that anyone would go to such lengths late at night on a dark country road just to return a receipt or some cash. This belief was further cemented when the same Jeep exhibited similar behavior towards a group of men carpooling to work in the early morning. If he was engaging in this strange activity with multiple people at different times, it raises questions about his real intentions. Transitioning to another story, I'd like to clarify that I am not a professional writer, but I've always been fascinated by the paranormal. Despite not being the bravest as a child, I've encountered many strange and sometimes terrifying things throughout my life. I grew up in a small town in Mexico, a tight-knit community where most people knew each other. Crime was rare, and life was peaceful. Being the youngest of five, and with often absent parents, I had a lot of freedom. My hometown was nestled in a valley, with the majority of it on one side of the tallest hills. My house was located right at the foot of the steepest hill, near two main streets. This main road led up to a hill used for religious traditions and was populated by family, including my grandmother's house midway up. Her property was extensive, with various family homes scattered around it. One night, I stayed late with cousins and began my walk home past midnight. Although streetlights were few and far between, the moonlight eased my nerves a bit. As I walked downhill towards my home, 
a sense of unease grew within me. I didn't feel imminent danger, but the sensation of being followed made my heart race. Upon reaching the corner towards my house, I passed an abandoned house that had always creeped me out. Normally, I'd walk on the opposite side to avoid it, but construction work and a parked delivery truck forced me to walk down the middle of the street. As I approached the house, I braced myself, my heart pounding with every step closer to the eerie, long abandoned building. That night, as I walked by the long abandoned house, my fears intensified inexplicably. Forcing myself to continue, I suddenly heard a voice calling out to me from the direction of the house. My heart leaped into my throat, and I froze, turning to look, but seeing no one. Relief washed over me briefly until I heard the voice again. This time, when I turned, I saw a boy about my age, standing there in the darkness, his figure oddly visible despite the absence of light. He remained silent for a few moments, just staring at me. When he finally spoke, he asked me to join him to play. I was too stunned to respond, my mind racing with confusion and fear. It was then I noticed the unnatural glow emanating from him. My body trembled, paralyzed by an inexplicable terror. As he stepped closer, his figure seemed to shift between darkness and light, and he called my name, my forename. It struck me then how much he resembled me, but his eyes were filled with a disturbing malevolence. This realization jolted me out of my frozen state. I screamed, no, at the apparition, and ran faster than I ever had in my life. To this day, I still have no idea what or who that thing was. It never followed me, and I never encountered it again. The memory lingers as a terrifying enigma. And honestly, I'm not sure I want to know what it was. Moving to another story, I live in a small inland town off the coast of New South Wales. Though it's called a town, my house is situated a few kilometers away from the central area. It's the kind of place where you can see your neighbors from a distance, but they'd have to be screaming for you to actually hear them. A few more kilometers up the... The road leading to the solid bush in National Park is an old, quiet dirt road, bordered by trees and frequented mostly by dirt bike riders on weekends and the occasional lost four-wheel drive or wood collector. It was the perfect place for me to walk my dogs. A Great Dane, a Husky, and my mom's Scotty Terrier. My Husky, known for her tendency to chase after kangaroos, was on an extender leash while the other two dogs roamed free. This particular road has what are called fire roads, which I believe serve as escape routes in case of bushfires. As we were heading back home, all the dogs suddenly froze. Initially, I assumed it was a kangaroo, but there was no usual excitement or pulling from my husky. Instead, all three dogs stood, their fur on end, staring towards one of the fire trails. Expecting to see a person or an animal, I looked towards the spot they were fixated on. There, I saw a brown-colored shadow amidst the thinner trees before the dirt track, about 15 meters away. This wasn't a familiar sight on my daily walks. Suddenly, the shadow shot off at an unnaturally high speed, with no sound of a motor or even the typical noise of movement through the bush. The dog's heads followed its path, affirming that I wasn't imagining things. After a moment of stunned silence, I approached the spot where the shadow had been. The dog's behavior was peculiar. My usually brave husky kept her distance. My Great Dane circled wide to avoid the area, his tail between his legs, and the Scotty followed, clearly frightened. 
they refused to investigate the spot. Unlike their typical reaction to an intriguing scent or animal presence, if it had been a person, my Dane would usually go into defense mode, but there was no such reaction. Familiar with the sounds and sights of the area, this encounter was unlike anything we had ever experienced. The absence of sound, the bizarre reaction of the dogs, and the fleeting glimpse of that shadowy figure left me with more questions than answers about what lurks in the quiet, secluded parts of the bush. In the bush, I'm used to the sounds of kangaroos, wallabies, birds, snakes, and even feral deer, but this entity moved as if it didn't touch the ground, making no sound at all. The silence that followed its departure only amplified the feeling of unease. The whole way back, I felt watched, constantly glancing over my shoulder, but there was nothing to be seen or heard. Once out of the bush, both the dogs and I began to feel more at ease. I'm uncertain about what I saw that day. Australian folklore talks about yaois and spirits, but this figure didn't seem to fit any typical descriptions. It was too large and solid, more akin to a bear standing on its hind legs. Yet Australia doesn't have bears or similar animals. Whatever it was, it left a profound impact on the dogs and me. Since then, I've ensured we're never alone on those walks, always accompanied by more people. Fast forward three years ago, I lived in a small Indiana town that I always dreamed of. It was the perfect balance of availability and quiet. My house was nestled at the bottom of a valley, and I didn't interact much with the neighbors, except for the ones living just north of me. One evening, I saw an unfamiliar girl, distinctly hippie in appearance, which was unusual for our small town. She was struggling with cell service and after a brief interaction where I tried to help, she moved on, and I never saw her again. Shortly after, my neighbor approached, curious about the girl. I shared our interaction, and to my surprise, my neighbor revealed she was a paranormal investigator from Texas, hired annually by other locals to investigate a notorious house up the street. My neighbor recounted strange occurrences linked to that house, including doors opening on their own and digital clocks behaving erratically, suggesting a presence beyond the ordinary. The revelation about the girl and the haunted history of the town added another layer of intrigue and unease to my experiences. It seemed that no matter where one might live, from the remote bushes of Australia to the valleys of Indiana. Stories and encounters with the unknown and the unexplained continue to persist, leaving us to wonder about the mysteries that surround us and the realities we might yet to understand. My neighbor's stories of paranormal investigations and encounters at the notorious house stirred my curiosity even though I've always been skeptical about ghosts and spirits. After the investigators left, life returned to normal, and I didn't hear any more about their findings. However, not long after, I began experiencing vivid, terrifying dreams while working the night shift at a state prison. Each dream involved being chased or attacked by unseen entities, jolting me awake in fear. This cycle of nightmares continued for weeks without much thought, attributing them to stress or an overactive imagination. Then sleep paralysis set in. During these episodes, I was conscious enough to see the time on my phones always on display, but unable to move. More disturbingly, I could perceive something floating in the corner of my room, an indistinct shape looming ominously above me. Each morning, 
after these horrifying experiences, I would wake up, shake off the fear, and get ready for work, almost enjoying the adrenaline rush like a haunted house attraction. This pattern persisted daily, happening around the same time each morning. But in 2018, everything changed when I started a new job at a university and moved closer to work. I settled into a new two-bedroom apartment and have lived there ever since. Since the move, I have never experienced. The cessation of the dreams and sleep paralysis following my move has always left me wondering if there was any connection to the eerie happenings in the old neighborhood or the notorious house the paranormal investigators were interested in. It's a mystery that lingers, making me question the unseen influences surrounding us. Thank you for tuning in to these creepy and allegedly true middle-of-nowhere horror stories. If you found yourself thrilled or chilled by these tales, don't forget to hit that like button. It supports the channel immensely. And the more likes the episode receives, the more it's promoted, helping the swamp's ever-expanding waters reach new listeners. If you're new to the swamp, consider joining us. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode. I upload multiple times a week, delving into all things natural and supernatural. And for those on the go, remember, you can download these stories for free on platforms like Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, and more. I'm curious to know which story tonight resonated with you the most. Your feedback is invaluable in curating even more captivating content. Drop your favorite story or any comments below. And don't forget to include today's code word, scattering tree, in your comment. The funniest comment will get pinned. Your support means the world to the swamp. And I'm excited to continue bringing you new, eerie tales. Remember, if you have stories of your own, submit them, and they might be featured in a future episode. Until then, stay spooky, and see you soon with another creepy episode.